Review process activated against six civil servants on grounds of persistent substandard work over the last six months. Six cruise ships visiting Hong Kong at the same time. And an investigation into yesterday's bridge collapse in Baltimore in the U.S. Good evening and thank you for joining us. It has been around six months since the Civil Service Bureau implemented a streamlined mechanism to retire civil servants on grounds of persistent substandard work. Under the new mechanism, the review process has been activated for six government officers so far. One civil servant has been forced to resign. Chief Executive John Lee announced in his 2022 policy address the intention to strengthen management of the civil service for officers whose performance is persistently poor despite supervision and assistance. Their appointments should be terminated. Under the streamlined mechanism, chances for officers to explain one's case are reduced from four times to twice. Specified observation period can only be extended once under specific circumstances with the removal of the independent committee within the department. In a written reply to queries from lawmakers, the Civil Service Bureau said since September last year, a total of six officers have been issued with a notification that activates the review process. Three officers remain under observation. One case improved performance during the observation period and has a disciplinary action suspended. Another civil servant will be issued with a letter of intent because work performance has remained subpar. One civil servant resigned. So far, no case has reached a stage of termination of appointment. With the limited number of cases, authorities said no details will be revealed about them to protect their privacy. Apart from slamming the slow process in retiring civil servants with poor performance, lawmaker Dominic Lee slammed the Civil Service Bureau for using privacy reasons as a pretext to keep such cases under wraps. Meanwhile, over the past six months, one civil servant has been retired under the old mechanism, which took about two years and seven months. The new mechanism aims to trim the processing time to within half a year. The Civil Service Bureau said for the backlog of cases, they will proactively monitor the progress of the responsible departments and provide suggestions when the need arises. Four cruise ships carrying some 10,000 visitors arrived in Hong Kong today. The ships have docked at the Kai Tak Cruise Terminal and the Ocean Terminal. Timothy Lee tells us more. Seaborne travelers on board two cruise ships made their way to the Kai Tak Cruise Terminal earlier today. One of them was the Mineship 5, which calls the SCR its home port. The other was the Serenade of the Seas, which sailed to the city for the first time. Some 5,000 passengers of the cruise ships made landfall. Many of them said they couldn't wait to enjoy the world-renowned shopping paradise. This tourist from Singapore said Hong Kong offers a lot of items not available in her country and that she looks forward to trying the local cuisine. Oh, we come to see the beautiful city. We've never been here before. We're going to go to Victoria Harbor and the Detran take the tram up and see the city and other sites along the way. We're going to go downtown to take a photo with the, the statue of Bruce Lee. I think it's here. So, and then maybe try some local food. I'm just here for today and then after that, I'm going to a whole different place. So I'm not limiting myself. Yeah, I can spend as much as I can just to make sure I have, I have a good time when I'm here. Secretary for Culture, Sports and Tourism Kevin Young, as well as Commissioner for Tourism Vivian Sum, arrived at the cruise terminal earlier to greet the visitors. The officials also took the opportunity to suggest some exhibitions and landmarks to them. The upsurge in visitors led to long queues for public transport in the area. Besides taxis and free shuttle buses traveling between the terminal and shopping malls in Kuntong, tour buses have been arranged to carry passengers to locations such as Mong Kok, the West Kowloon Cultural District, and Causeway Bay. Passenger fees cost between $40 and $100. Meanwhile, another two cruise ships from the U.S. and Germany docked at the Ocean Terminal in Chimsha Chui, bringing around 5,000 visitors to the city. Timothy Lee, TVB News. Hong Kong Express has reported a record-breaking number of passengers this month at over 500,000. The airline stresses passenger flight capacity has surpassed that of the pre-pandemic era and predicted a further growth of 20 to 30 percent within this year. Timothy Lee again. 
With the Easter holidays coming up in just a few days, many residents are eager for the opportunity to travel abroad. This SHK Express said its passenger load factor, or occupancy rate, reached over 90 percent this week and is set to continue to rise. The airline noted its passenger flight capacity in January reached 140 percent of that of the pre-pandemic era and plans to reach its target of 170 percent by the end of the year. Its fleet has also grown to 40 aircraft compared with 23 before the pandemic. Regarding the number of passengers, HK Express carried close to 1.3 million passengers in the first three months of this year, with the airline serving some 500,000 passengers alone this month, breaking previous records. HK Express CEO Jeanette Mao emphasized the airline's plan to expand its list of destinations this year, particularly on the Chinese mainland. By end of this year, we expect to increase the destination to 30 and also to have a more balanced, background, uh, more balanced network between Northeast Asia, Southeast Asia and mainland China. Uh, although we don't have any flights uh, to Greater Bay Area, but actually among four passen every four passengers, one of them on HK Express actually coming from Greater Bay Area. And this is a very potential and very big market. Every month we have more than 150,000 passengers coming from Greater Bay Area. So, and also compared to other markets, the Greater Bay Area passengers are younger, which will, is also a very potential and targeted audience to fuel our future growth. Facing a rising number of both destinations and passengers, the HK Express CEO stressed the airline currently employs more than 800 pilots and flight attendants and will try to hire an additional 500 people this year. HK Express said they will address the manpower shortage problem by making more hires in the mainland. The airline believes such employees will better facilitate the growing number of tourists coming from the Greater Bay Area. Timothy Lee, TVB News. President Xi Jinping met with American business leaders as well as senior representatives from the strategic and academic communities in Beijing today. The meeting took place at the Great Hall of the People and attendees included leaders from Blackstone, Qualcomm and Harvard's John F. Kennedy School of Government. She said the success of China and the United States is each other's opportunity. As long as both sides treat each other as partners with mutual respect, peaceful coexistence and win-win cooperation, China and U.S. relations will get better. She urged the United States to work with China similarly, establish a correct strategic perception and properly handle sensitive issues. In Baltimore, divers returned to the water surrounding a collapsed bridge this morning, searching for six missing workers who are presumed dead. The bridge collapsed when a cargo ship crashed into it, throwing the workers off the bridge and into the river below. An investigation is underway into the bridge collapse. Tracy Furness reports. The moment Singapore flagged cargo ship Dali lost its steering capabilities and crashed into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge before dawn Tuesday morning. The bridge collapsed in seconds. Workers doing repairs on the bridge were thrown into the frigid Papapsco River. Two were rescued, with six workers missing, presumed dead. The ship sent out a warning, enabling police to prevent vehicles from the span of the bridge. The National Transportation Safety Board is launching a team to investigate the bridge collapse. The team of experts include experts in nautical operations, and what they're going to look at and begin to collect is information on vessel operations, safety history, safety record, the look at the owner, uh, the look at the operator, and the look at the operations this day, uh, today. President Joe Biden intends for the federal government to pick up the entire cost of rebuilding the Baltimore Bridge. We're going to send all the federal resources they need as we respond to this emergency. And we're going to rebuild that port together. A structural and civil engineer who designs bridges explains why the collapse happened so quickly. This bridge is a, a steel truss bridge um, that uh, spans over, th over three spans, so two piers and then, and then supported at either end. Um, because this is a continuous structure, i.e. there is no structural break at the piers, all of those spans work together to share loads in its normal operation. Uh, and much like uh, a, a stack of uh, stack of books, if you take one of those supports out, um, unfortunately, that will pull all three spans over. 
Maryland residents say they are worried about the economic impact of the bridge collapse, as it will take years to rebuild. The beltway is going to be down for four years, but the main thing they got to do right now is get that shipping channel open. That's our biggest moneymaker in the whole state, right there, the Port of Baltimore. And now your moneymaker shut down. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg said closure of the port would have a major and protracted impact to supply chains. The Port of Baltimore handles more automobile freight than any other U.S. port, more than 750,000 vehicles in 2022, as well as container and bulk cargo ranging from sugar to coal. Tracy Furness, TVB News. Investigators are asking how a bridge in Baltimore collapsed so quickly after a container ship crashed into it early Tuesday morning. NBC News reports. It was pitch black as the dolly left port headed out to sea. Traveling at eight knots, just over nine miles per hour, it took just four minutes from the first signs of trouble to the moment the ship crashed into the bridge. At 1.24 a.m., the lights suddenly went out on the ship's deck. They came back on a minute later as dark smoke started billowing from the stack. At 1.26 a.m., the dolly appeared to turn, but at the same moment, the lights went out again. Two minutes later, at 1.28 a.m., the ship collided with the bridge, the superstructure quickly crumbling into the river below. We searched best we could this sunken uh, vessel. Among the questions for investigators, did the bridge have sufficient barriers to protect its support structures? Once the bridge is impacted directly in one of its piers, Key Bridge or another bridge, that's going to be the end. Under U.S. law, ships entering and leaving U.S. ports must use a local pilot to help navigate the waters. They have all the knowledge of the waterways. They memorize the charts. They can literally draw the chart from scratch on a piece of paper. Early this morning, a local pilot was on the ship. There's nothing worse on the bridge of a ship when everything goes quiet. Already tonight, ships that can't get in are backed up outside Baltimore Harbor. Now 24 NTSB investigators are on the scene. They will recover the ship's data recorders, examine the ship's safety and maintenance records. Any sort of maintenance that was done to a vessel. An online database shows the ship has had 27 inspections since 2015, with two deficiencies found. Last year, a problem with propulsion, and 2016, the ship hit the port in Antwerp, damaging its hull. Because the ship is flagged to Singapore, a team from that country is also responding. Built in 1977, the Francis Scott Key Bridge was constructed to handle heavy traffic. Experts say removing the wreckage from the water, then rebuilding the bridge could take years. And still ahead, U.S. and Israeli defense ministers meet after the U.N. Security Council resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. And a case of murder and attempted suicide in Kowloon Welcome back. The UN Security Council resolution calling for an Israel Hamas ceasefire during the remainder of Ramadan has had little impact on the ground in Gaza. The war continues with multiple strikes, and truce talks are making little progress. David Garrett reports. Buildings continue to be turned into sand pits, dust in the air, and rubble on the ground. The latest strike comes hours after a non binding UN Security Council resolution called for a ceasefire during Ramadan, a move not blocked by Washington. Yet the death count rises. 16 were said to have been killed here. Health officials put the total since October at more than 32,000. The mourning continues and the tears are flowing. We were watching the news and happy about the ceasefire. We said the war would end, Mahmoud says. A missile destroyed the house. There were 40 people inside. Abstention. A day on from the U.S. not standing in the way of a U.N. call for a stop in the fighting, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant met with his American counterpart Lloyd Austin. There was clear tension in the Pentagon. The two defense chiefs sat across from each other. A second Israeli delegation to Washington was cancelled after the U.S. chose not to use its veto power at the U.N. Security Council. Hamas claims Israel is losing protection and the U.S. is unable to impose its will internationally. The means to achieve our goals the destruction 
of Hamas organization and bringing back the Israeli hostages back home. Uh, the negotiation on the hostage issue and Hamas positions require us to join hands in, the, in our military and diplomatic uh, efforts and to increase pressure uh, on Hamas. Ease the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. The safety of the 1.5 million Palestinian civilians in Rafah is also a top priority for the United States. Now we continue to share the goal of seeing Hamas defeated. So we'll discuss alternative approaches to target Hamas elements, and we must also plan for Israel's security after this conflict ends. Qatari mediators trying to bring an end to the Israel-Hamas war say the UN resolution has had no immediate effect on negotiations. Uh, they are, as I said, they are uh, ongoing as they were uh, before uh, uh, this decision was uh, taking place. Other statements, you know, that came out uh, from the Israeli government are, you know, bilaterally between the U.S. and uh, Israel, and they have not affected the talks as we speak right now. Hamas says it will hold hostages until Israel agrees to a permanent ceasefire. Israel wants all returned immediately. These protests stop traffic, demonstrators locking themselves in symbolic cages, telling the Israeli government to get the release deal done and worry about the rest later. David Garrett, TVV News. Locally, an 84-year-old man died in his Kaluntang home after he was suspected to have been murdered by his wife. The woman is suspected to have used tape to deprive him of oxygen before attempting suicide herself. She was unconscious when sent to hospital. Authorities have listed the case as murder and attempted suicide. The incident occurred at 22 Beacon Hill Road. Police received a report at around 4.30 a.m. from a domestic helper, saying that her female employer had fainted in the house. Officers arrived at the scene and found both 84-year-old year old man and a 71 year old woman unconscious at the premises. The latter suffered knife wounds to the hands and neck. Preliminary investigations indicated the two were a married couple and that the wife used tape to cover her husband's nose and mouth before attempting suicide. No suicide note was found. Sources said the wife expressed suicidal thoughts to her domestic helper after being concerned about her ability to care for her husband. A man has been sentenced to 45 days in prison for throwing a national flag and Hong Kong SAR flag into Anula. The case happened on July 3rd last year, when a 36-year-old defendant threw the two flags into the Anula outside Longping MTR station in Yunlong. He initially pleaded not guilty to desecrating the national flag and the Hong Kong SAR flag, but decided to admit the charges before the opening of the trial. The defense said the act was not premeditated and there was no political motivation, adding that the defendant was, was just venting his emotions as he was unemployed and facing economic pressure. The magistrate said the case was serious as the flags are symbols of national sovereignty and a custodial sentence was inevitable. Starting from the next school year, the written and speaking assessments of the language proficiency assessment for English and Putonghua teachers will be replaced with IELTS and the state's Putonghua proficiency test. The Education Bureau said the decision comes after taking into account concerns expressed by the education sector and stakeholders, the latest trends of education development and students' learning needs. English teachers who do not possess a relevant degree in English or have not received relevant specialized training are required to attain an overall band score of 7.5 or above, with no less than 7 in scores for individual papers. Putonghua teachers, meanwhile, are required to obtain level 2 or above in the test of proficiency in Putonghua by the State Language Commission. And that's the news. Thank you for watching.